I know we love preaching around here. I always enjoy the guest preachers that come our way. And I trust we never take it for granted when we do have another pastor come to have Brother Turner leave his congregation and come here. It's not uh, easy. Uh, it's, I know his heart's there and uh, Burnaby as well. And then his wife being there, not feeling 100%. But I appreciate the fact that he came this way to give us his day, his last few days. And uh, it's really amazing to me, like I never give anyone, you know, a, a title or a, a direction to go with the messages and whatnot. And I always appreciate the fact when God gets involved in a meeting and you hear a message, you just say, God's putting something together here. And so uh, God's putting something together here. And I always anticipate the preaching because I'm wondering, what's God got for us today? And uh, I know I'm a pastor, and uh, you hear from me a lot, but I tell you what, I love preaching. And I love to hear the preacher preach and just see the, how God uses personality and uh, as he fleshes that out for us. And so, uh, Brother Turner, it's been a pleasure having you here, and uh, it's good having get to know you a little bit more. We really didn't know each other that well from a distance we did, but uh, it's been good to get to know him uh, just these few days. So you come and preach to us. Good to have you here. Man. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Let's take our Bibles once again this evening and turn to Exodus chapter 19. I agree with the pastor how God puts things together is absolutely amazing. Uh, even this last special that we just heard I believe we'll even see how God will use that uh, with his message tonight. I also want to say thank you to the, the choirs that sang for us tonight. Wasn't that excellent? That was amazing. And uh, right. And uh, the amazing choir. And uh, if you get if you could ever get a bus and, and drive to Vancouver, we'll have that amazing choir uh, sing for us or the awesome choir, whatever their name was. And we'll take those teenagers too. Wow. That was really touching. And what a blessing. I took a little video clip to take home with me and uh, because I know my wife would have loved to have seen them singing for the Lord. It's always encouraging. And this beautiful music in the, uh, the offertory, you know, people practice, people put in time. And I know uh, I'm not in any way a musician at all. <laughs> me and the radio, that's about it. I don't even need a radio anymore, thankfully. They have other ways we can listen to good music, but... Um, I appreciate the effort that's put into that, and I want to thank you, those of you that are involved in leading the music ministry here and participating in it. Uh, it's a great encouragement. Uh, it was to me today, and thank you from this morning all the way to tonight. Thank you for putting in the effort uh, for, the, for the glory of the Lord. Exodus chapter 19. And I'm going to read the first four verses and uh, we'll look specifically at a statement that the Lord made to Moses in verse number four. And we're asking the Lord to help us tonight. You pray that the Lord would help us, whether we're the speaker or the listener, that we would be emptied of ourself and filled with his spirit. And uh, once again, that God would get all the glory for this. I'm thankful we have the Bible because uh, that's what we need most. We need manna from heaven from God's word. Verse 1, In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. For they were departed from Rephidim and were come to the desert of Sinai and had pitched in the wilderness. And there Israel camped before the mount. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings. Notice, if you will, this statement at the end of verse 4, And brought you unto myself. And brought you unto myself. I'd like to speak to us this evening just on this thought of, I brought you. I brought you. Heavenly Father, again, we stand behind the sacred desk, and I thank you, Lord, for the privilege to open your word. I 
I don't count it lightly. And I pray, God, that you would not allow me to say anything, prevent me from saying anything that would be dishonoring to you, but that you would enable me to say everything that would honor you, that you would have for us tonight. Holy Spirit of God, there's no way that I can help anyone here without you. So please, I want to be emptied of anything of me and filled with your spirit. And I pray that the listeners alike that are saved would be filled with the spirit as well. And for those that are not saved, possibly in our midst tonight, that they would be under deep conviction of, the, of, the, of that same spirit that they need to be saved. They need to turn to you tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. It had only been a, a three short months that the nation of Israel had been journeying, and they've come to the wilderness of Sinai. As we read, they've set up camp there at the base of the mountain, and what is coming in uh, chapter 20 is the Ten Commandments. God is preparing to give them the law. But prior to this, uh, God brings Moses up and emphasizes to him something that I think is very encouraging to me tonight, and I trust it will encourage you as well. And God says to Moses, I want you to make sure that the people know that even though they've seen some amazing things in Egypt, I mean, just again, think about those 10 plagues. Think about each one of them and every time that it would not affect the nation of Israel where they were and they would be protected and God did just an amazing miracle and, and it was, uh, it was uh, powerful. And I mean, wow, what a memory for them to be able to pass on to generation after generation. It, it kind of reminds me of also not missing the blessings that God brings into my life. And not missing the miracles just of a day, that to have the breath to live and to see God work in just one day of our life is an absolute miracle. And God speaks to Moses about that and he says that uh, you saw what happened and they saw what happened in the, in, in the land of Egypt and how I bore you and bear you on eagle's wings. But notice he says, and brought you unto myself brought you unto myself. That's the expression that God has really put on my heart tonight. To me, this is the meaning of my life. This is the meaning of your life. This is the meaning of every day that we have. What are you saying, Pastor Turner? God bringing us to himself. God bringing us to himself. We talked about that this morning for salvation, but that's not the only reason why God brings us to himself. God wants us to know him. God wants us to know his will. And we've told, been told, I've been told many times, when you open the Bible, you open the mind of God. And God wants us to bring us to himself. He is seeking us. I did not seek God, but God sought me. God is calling me and God is calling you again, not just for to be saved, but to know him in, a, in, a, in an intimate way, to know him in a personal way. I said the other day that this is a personal letter to me. When you open this Bible that we talked about in Sunday school, it's not just a Bible for the church, although it is. And it's not just a Bible for your neighbor, although it is, but it's a book for you. And it's a book for me and it's personal. And I'm so thankful God speaks to us. All of the miracles that led the people to this point were for a purpose. They were, if you will, a means to an end. They were leading up to something even greater than the miracles. And that was God bringing them to himself. Hold your finger there. We'll come back to the Old Testament book of Exodus. But turn with me to the first book of the New Testament, the book of Matthew in chapter number 11. I brought you unto myself. Matthew chapter number 11. And in verse number 28, notice these first three words, come unto me. Come unto me. It's an invitation, isn't it? It's an invitation from the Lord. It's, it's an invitation for us tonight. It's an invitation for us this week. It's an invitation for us later this year. I don't know exactly. We don't have that, liber uh, that knowledge to know what is coming, but I'm so thankful God knows what is coming in our life. And he says, I'm trying to bring you unto myself. And he's saying here in another invitation, come unto me. 
The invitation is open. The invitation is extended. Look who it's extended to. All ye that labor and are heavy laden. Maybe you're laboring for the Lord tonight and, and you're laboring for the King of Kings and you're serving the Lord, but in some way there's a heaviness. In some way there's, there's something that as soon as somebody says what's on your heart or who's on your heart, it doesn't take long for you to be able to think of a child's name. It doesn't take very long for you to think of a grandchild's name. It doesn't think of you uh, very long to think of this or that or whatever it may be. And again, the invitation is so beautiful. It's so clear. Come unto me. Now, I'm thankful for the church. I'm thankful for this church. What an encouragement it's been to be with you all for a few days. I am looking forward to getting home to see my precious wife. I'm looking forward to getting home to Anchor Baptist Church. I'm thankful for the church here, though. But he says, come unto me. I'm thankful for the church. I'm thankful for the family of God. But Jesus said, come unto me. We have direct access to the Father through the Son. God said, I'm bringing you to myself. Moses, you saw everything, but that's not the purpose. The purpose is I'm bringing a people unto myself. Amen. And tonight, God is still bringing a people unto himself. Amen. And he says, I will give you rest. I will give you rest. I'm so thankful tonight that, honestly, rest is not the goal, but God is the goal. But a byproduct of being close to God is rest. Miracles are not the goal, but God is the goal. And a byproduct of being close to God are miracles. You believe God still does miracles. You believe that God can still do whatever God wants to do. He is all powerful. He is omnipotent. He is almighty. Nothing is too hard for him. And I just want to get as close as I can to God so that when a miracle happens, I'll be right there on the front row. I don't know how much, I don't know how, what kind of money people pay to go to the Super Bowl. Thousands and thousands of dollars to get a good seat on the 50 yard line or whatever a good seat is, I don't know, but thousands and thousands of dollars that because they wanna be right there, they wanna see the action, they wanna be close to it. Well, I'll tell you tonight, much greater than the Super Bowl is to be right close to the God of heaven, to be right close to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And he doesn't say, stay away from me. He doesn't stay, uh, stay back from me. He says, come unto me. He says, I'm gonna bring you unto myself. That's our God. A byproduct of being close to him is miracles. Philippians 3.10, if you turn over there quickly, Philippians 3.10, we'll get back to Exodus in just a moment. Philippians 3.10, the apostle Paul writes here in verse number 10, again, we familiar verses of scripture, but I'm so glad that repetition is the key to learning. And may we, meet, may we repeat these over and over again, but notice the first five words of Philippians 3.10. Could we read the first five words together out loud? Is that okay? We're starting with the word that. Are you with me? Philippians 3.10. Ready? The first five words. That I may know him. That I may know him. That I may know the one that spoke the world into existence. That I may know the one that sent ten plagues that I may know the one that parted the Red Sea and the Israel walked across on dry ground. And not only that, but Egypt tried it and it didn't work too well. I mean, can you imagine that sight? The one who did all of this says, I'm bringing you unto myself. I'm bringing something into your life that you may not like, but I'm bringing you unto myself that I may know him, that I may know him. No doubt Paul was already a believer. He already knew the Lord Jesus Christ as his Savior. However, he is still striving to come unto him and know him in a greater way. The Lord explained to Moses that when he called him down to Egypt to lead God's people out, he wanted Moses to understand that he was bringing them not to a land, but to a person. What makes heaven heaven? We might say the street of gold. That, that's that's kind of cool. Yeah, okay, fine. Gate of pearl. Okay. That's not what makes heaven heaven. 
I mean, the Savior is, is there, or, or the, the Savior is there waiting. It's not a, pl a place, it's not even a mansion that makes, it's not even the place that God is preparing for me that makes heaven heaven. None of that makes heaven heaven. What makes heaven is our Savior is there, our Heavenly Father is there, and he's saying, not only do you uh, look forward to heaven, but I can give you some heaven on earth. Amen. You can know me now. You can know my great grace now. Canaan, if you will, was a byproduct of being with God. Everything that comes into my life is for the sole purpose of me being brought closer to the Lord. He desires to meet with me every day. That's pretty humbling, isn't it? He desires to lead me every day. It was in the same book of Philippians chapter 2, verse 13, that Paul writes, For it is God which worketh in you. God is working in me. God is working in you. Teenager, God is working in you. I enjoyed having lunch today with some of the college students and being able to talk about the things of the Lord and, and God is working in you. God has a perfect will. He's drawing you close to himself that you may know him, that you may know the power of his resurrection, that you may be, that he, he would work in you and perform in you. Let God continue to do that. He is bringing me to himself. Let's go back to Genesis, excuse me, Exodus 19. And let's notice that Moses mentions, or God, excuse me, mentions to Moses about, an, about a bird here. Not your typical bird, that eagle. He says in verse 4, how I bear you on eagle's wings. Also, we read in Deuteronomy 32, verse 11 and 12, as an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings, so the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. Right after God speaks about the eagle, he says to Moses, and brought you unto myself. I'd like to just give you a few words in relation to the eagle and how the Lord is bringing us to himself. Number one, the eagle forms. The eagle forms. What am I saying? I'm saying that, can you imagine the effort that the eagle puts forth in, by building her nest? And she's forming that nest for her young ones. She's forming that nest for the eaglets, if you will. She's choosing the choosing of the place. Where is the, uh, where is the nest going to be put? Where is the nest going to be built? Gathering all the materials to build the nest uh, where her, her eggs will rest. And eventually those eggs are going to hatch. And, and there's going to be an eaglet there. And there will, the nest will be formed with care and precision. And it's, I mean, it's an amazing thing that takes place as an eagle builds that nest and forms that nest I submit to you tonight no one here is self-made there's no one here tonight that can just take care of life on their own I am totally dependent on my heavenly father in heaven I must have God in my life I must have his power I must have his holy spirit being filled with his spirit I'm thankful that God is forming me Philippians 1 6 being confident of this very thing being confident of this very thing. I like that word confidence, don't you? Being confident of this very thing that he which hath begun a good work in you. I'm so thankful God is still working on me. I love the little song, he's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. Took him just a week to make the moon and the stars, the sun and the earth and Jupiter and Mars. How loving and patient he must be. He's still working on me. Being confident this very thing that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. God is forming us tonight. God is molding us tonight. He who started the work will be faithful to complete it. The hard part is this, letting God build it. Because I want to get in on that. You know, I, I don't really like this form, God, that you're putting me in right now. I'd like to have a different one. I think I could maybe do it a little bit easier with a little less pain or a little less heartache or a little less struggle. And God says, no, let me form it because I'm bringing you unto myself. I'm bringing you unto myself. Let him build your life. Let him do the forming. A work is in progress. God is building. You and I are a construction site. 
We're an eagle's nest, if you will. God is forming us. Secondly, though, as an eagle, the Lord forms. But number two, as an eagle, the Lord breaks. The Lord breaks. This mother eagle knows that the baby eaglet, they are not staying, will not stay in the nest forever. Eagles, I didn't even think about this. The eagles are playing in the Super Bowl. Oh my goodness, wow. Anyway, it just happened. And that's not how the Lord leads, okay? I'm not saying that about what the pastor said. I actually just hit me. Um, eagles are not meant to stay in the nest. Eagles are born to fly. Eagles are born to fly. That mother eagle begins to break up the nest little by little so it is not comfortable for those baby eagles. You could say that the mother eagle is causing the babies to look beyond the nest, to look beyond what is comfortable. You know, as a teenager and even into my late teen years, I had no desire to be a pastor. That was not on my list. Coaching, teaching, maybe phys ed. I didn't want to teach much beyond athletics. <laughs> but nowhere on my list was pastoring. I'm so thankful for the great mercy and grace of God. And believe me, I'm just a volunteer, really. I'm just a volunteer. I just said, Lord, okay, if you want to use me in whatever way, I'll, I'll do whatever. I'm definitely not deserving of that. I'm not worthy of that. But I just know this, that God has taken me in my short life. God has taken me through a lot of breaking times. God has taken me, and to God be the glory, it's not to cause and inflict undue pain. It's to cause me to make sure, to keep, keep getting closer to him. Remember, he said, I brought you unto myself. And God will bring things into our life that will do that to us. And so she begins to break up the nest because these eagles will never learn to fly by sitting in the nest. The faith life is the greatest life, by the way, to live. I'm so glad for salvation by faith, but I, I'm praying that God would increase my faith every day, that I would not just be thankful that I'm saved by faith, that I would be able to live by faith. And I'm, I'm still working on that. I'm asking God, work on me, work on me, work on me. I really, truly want greater faith in my life. I want him to break me. God, the quote says that God is in disturbances as much as he is in deliverances. God does a very good job sometime of disturbing our life. Because why? He's trying to bring us to himself. That I may know him. Would you go with me quickly in your Bible to Acts chapter 8? Acts chapter 8, I, I can't imagine in the Bible, I mean, there's many great examples, but as we think about the local church tonight, I think we think about disturbances, I think we think about breaking it up, I think we think about a challenge here in Acts chapter 8. And I think, we'd be, I think we're very thankful it happened <laughs> when we read the verses that maybe you know what I'm about to read. And that's Acts chapter eight, verse one. And Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time, there was a great, what? Persecution. We might say a breaking. The church wasn't supposed to stay in Jerusalem. The eagle's not supposed to stay in the nest. The church was booming. The church was growing, but God allowed a disturbance against the church, which was at Jerusalem, and they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of, guess where? How about Acts 1.8? Amen. You could write Acts 1.8 beside that. Judea and Samaria. God said, go to those places, and they hadn't done it yet. And God said, okay, we're going to have to help you go there. We're going to have to break up the nest. We're going to have to uh, break things up a little bit. And the Bible says there in Acts 2, 8, 8, 2, excuse me, and devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. And 
As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house and hailing men and women, committed them to prison. But look at verse 4. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad, notice what they did. They went everywhere preaching the word. God said, okay, you're not going to leave Jerusalem. You're not doing it, so here we go. I'm going to poke around a little bit. We're going to bring some disturbance in a little bit. I mean, a big bit, I guess. I mean, Stephen died. I'm not making fun of that, but God brought it in. And sometimes God has to bring that into Ben Turner's life. And God has to say, you know, you seem to be a little comfortable over here. You seem to be a little complacent over here. And I'm trying to bring you into myself. And you're just sitting back and you're just taking thy knees and maybe eating and drinking and being merry or whatever. And God says, okay, I'm going to bring some breaking into your life. Not because he doesn't love me, but because he does love me. And because he wants me to be closer to him. He's got to break off those pieces in my life. And I, I ask him to continue to do that. God is still breaking up the nest of the, un, of the comfortable tonight. And God is still breaking up the nest of the content tonight. And God is still breaking up the nest of the complacent tonight. I'm thankful that God is working in Winkler, Manitoba, and in Winnipeg, Manitoba, and across the land of Canada to the west and to the east. I'm thankful that God is breaking up. I mean, think about what God has allowed to happen over these last few years. And I pray that we won't miss what God is trying to do. He's trying to bring us to himself. He's trying to refine us and put that fire under me and say, okay, we've got to burn off some dross, Turner. I'm going to turn the heat up because I'm bringing you unto myself. I have a perfect plan. God is breaking. As an eagle, the Lord forms. As an eagle, the Lord breaks. Number three, as an eagle, the Lord watches. Let's go to Deuteronomy 32, please. He watches. Oh, I'm thankful for this. Deuteronomy 32, verse 11. Thank you for listening. I pray God is speaking to our hearts tonight. As an eagle, verse 11, um, Deuteronomy 32, 11, as an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, and beareth them on her wings. Wow. God is watching over us tonight. While God may be stirring us and while God may be forming us and while God may be breaking us, I'm thankful that God is by us tonight. As the mother eagle, if you will, he is there keeping a a track of us and, 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 and is there on our beck and cry. These eaglets, they don't learn to fly by watching one another. They learn to fly by watching their mother. And tonight, we learn to live the Christian life as we looked at this morning, looking unto Jesus. And tonight, God is saying, hey, look at my son. Don't look at this world. Don't even look at uh, other Christians. I mean, yes, we should be encouraging one another, but ultimately, look unto Jesus. Watch him. Watch his example. 2 Chronicles 16 and 9. 2 Chronicles 16 and 9. He's watching you tonight. He's watching me tonight. That's very comforting. I'm thankful for the eyes of the Lord. 2 Chronicles 16, 9. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. thankful that our God is so big so strong and so mighty there's nothing my God cannot do the mountains are his the valleys are his the stars are his handiwork too if you're saved tonight your God is so big so strong and so mighty there's nothing your God cannot do His eyes are watching you, protecting you, loving us, providing for us. Our Heavenly Father watches over us every day. As an eagle, the Lord forms, he breaks, he watches. And then number four, and lastly, he holds. He holds. Eventually, one of the eagles 
is going to give this flying thing a try. They're going to they're gonna go. It's time for flight school to begin. It's time, for get out of that, it's time to get out of that nest. Notice verse 32, or I'll just read it to you. Deuteronomy 32, 11, it said that the eagle, the eagle takes them, bears them on her wings. More than likely, that first attempt of an eaglet probably would not be the most graceful looking. You know, I can just imagine possibly the mother eagle swooping down and helping that eaglet or even catching that eaglet, if you will. As it attempts to be that rookie pilot. And again, as eagles, I'm not made to sit around in the nest. I'm made to fly, if you will. Proverbs 24, 16 tells me that a just man falleth seven times, but riseth up again. Tonight, maybe, maybe you've fallen. Maybe, you're, maybe, you're, maybe you feel like you jumped out of the nest and, man, you're, just the, you're, you're that uh, new eaglet, if you will, or, or whatever it may be. I want to encourage you tonight that uh, God still has a hold of you. Amen. If you're saved tonight, you are secure in the very hand of God. Amen. And God has a perfect plan for your life. And I'm one of these just men. I've fallen before. But I'm thankful for the mercy of God who allows me to get up. He allows me to get up and dust myself off and, and, and maybe and repent of sin in my own personal life and say, okay, Ben, let's go. We're going forward. I'm drawing you unto myself. I'm bringing you unto myself. Psalm 37. Let's turn over there quickly. So we come to the close of the message here in just a moment. Psalm 37, I brought you. God said that to the Israel, but God says it to us tonight. I'm bringing you unto myself. He's a good God. He's a loving God. He's a faithful God. He's a, he's a provider God. And he's bringing us to himself. Psalm 37, 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delighteth in his way. Verse 24, I hope you'll mark it in your heart at least. Though he fall. That's not talking about the Lord. Because he doesn't fall. So there's only one other person it's talking about. Just man. Though he fall. He shall not. Or the good man. He shall not be utterly cast down. He can never be down and out for good. He'll, he can never get the final count in, in the boxing match. Can't remember how many that is. Ten count or whatever. Because why? Because it says here we have a promise. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Tonight the Lord's holding you up. The Lord's holding me up. I'm not dependent tonight. I, I don't want to be dependent on my strength. I don't want it to be dependent on, on a, even a, my, my uh, college diploma. I don't want to be dependent on 22 years of pastoring. No, I, that's not going to help me. But what is going to help me is if I depend on the mighty hand of God and he will never drop me, okay? He will never drop you. He is always holding me up. Why? Because he's bringing me to himself. I brought you to myself. We mentioned the scene at Calvary this morning. All that the Lord went through so we could have new life. He paid a very high price so that we could be born again. He did not pay this price for me just to live my life for self. He paid this price to, so I would live my life for him. I gave, I gave my life to him. For thee, Jesus said, what hast Thou given for me. Only one life will soon be passed. And only what's done for Christ will last. God is bringing us to himself. God, whatever God is allowing right now in your life, it's not to inflict pain. It's to bring you, possibly to a place of repentance in some area of your life, but ultimately to bring you, to bring me, to himself the price was paid so I could be brought to him so I could serve him so I could be his ambassador 
God said to Moses, you have seen what I did unto the Egyptians and how I bear you on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. The Lord, as the eagle, forms, breaks, watches, and holds. He's a faithful God. Wherever you're at on that journey tonight, give God thanks for it. We're going to pray in just a minute. We're going to have an invitation. Let's not leave tonight before we take a moment to say, God, thank you for bringing me to yourself. God, thank you for bringing me into this valley that I might seek you in a greater way. Because as we know, the song says, even in the valley, God is good. Let's pray together. Thank you again for listening to the Lord. It's a privilege to open God's word. Be with you folks today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for breaking me in certain ways in my life. And I pray, Lord, if there's more that needs to be broken, I pray you'd do it. Because I know your grace will help me in that. Because you're trying to bring me. You want me to be close to you. You want me to know you. You want me to know the power of your resurrection. Fellowship of your suffering. Thank you, Lord, that you are still working on us tonight. And we know that your word says you will perform it into the day of Jesus Christ. Thank you for that. Father, there might be someone here in our midst tonight who doesn't know Christ as Savior. They do not have the assurance if they died this evening, if they did not wake up tomorrow morning and somehow they passed away in their sleep tonight, they do not have the assurance that they would be in heaven. Lord, I pray that this very moment your Holy Spirit would convict them that they need to be saved and they don't need to wait till tomorrow. They need to trust you tonight. Please, Lord, would you do the work there? And then, Lord, I pray that as we who know you as Savior recognize that, yes, you are trying to bring us to yourself, not just so we can go to heaven, but so that we can have great victory right now so that we can know you in a greater way. Would you please move across this auditorium and would it not just be for the sake of while we're here, but for the sake of the quietness of our evening, maybe when we're at home by ourselves, or tomorrow on our lunch break or whatever and we begin to kind of meditate and think more about the word of God that we heard today. Father, I pray that as we meditate on your word, that we would draw closer to you and recognize that you are doing a work in us and through us for your glory. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Would you stand with me this evening? We'll have a, the piano play whenever that's available. Possibly you, need to, you would like to come to the altar tonight and just talk to the Lord about something. You can do that. It's open for us tonight. If the Lord's challenging us, if the Spirit is challenging us, yes, we can talk to Him in our seat, and if that's what you need to do, that's fine, but possibly if you're physically able, you would just make your way and talk to the Lord here at the altar. Maybe you're someone who, when we said, if they didn't wake up tomorrow morning, God kind of spoke to you in your heart. You're not sure you're saved. You could come and find one of the pastors here. Pastor Sullivan's right here in the middle aisle. And just tell him, I'm not sure I'm saved. Somebody can take the Bible and show you how to be born again. 